Ramadan is one of the most important holidays on the Muslim calendar, but few Christians know much about it beyond the month-long fasting. To learn firsthand what Ramadan means for young Muslims, let's meet Maha Kateb, Miriam Abdel Razak, and Fatah Turkmani. They're seniors at Universal School in Bridgeview, Illinois. Thank you all for being here. I really appreciate speaking with you. Thank you, Thank you can for you, having us. Can you start off by telling us a little bit about Ramadan, the history of it, and, and, and what it means for young Muslims today? Oh, I want to that. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> Ramadan is basically, it's known as the holiest month of the year to Muslims. And it's because the, we believe that the Quran was revealed in that month. And it's, you know, it's a big part of our religion because during that month we become more connected like spiritually with God, with, we worship more, we try. And it's not just abstaining from food and water, it's abstaining from swearing, abstaining from anything bad. It just helps you like, it's basically self-control. Mm -hmm. It's helping you sustain yourself from anything bad, you know, being more respectful to your parents, being more conscious of what you're doing and what you're saying. And it just helps you like personally for me like and for all of us I think yeah. like not having food or water makes you appreciate it ten times more than you would have before. Yeah. What did each of you gain in this particular Ramadan year and, and, and the prayer and the reflection that you each went through? Okay well um, me personally I became more patient you mm. really it really yeah. teaches us patience and modesty and anytime we want to do anything it's kind of a reminder that you know we're fasting we we think twice before doing whatever it is that we're gonna do mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and so. also like with that because you're also more conscious when you're fasting just because you're like oh I don't want to break my fast you know you're doing all this mm -hmm. you know you don't want your whole work to go just because you swore or you talked about someone you know and for me also that's what it is as well it's like every time I want to say something about someone, I just, I'm like, no, no, let me not. Yeah. Just, you know, it just, you hold back a yeah, bit. yeah, just you back up and you think about it more. And also, like, we're all on the volleyball team. Mm -hmm. okay. And we had, like, oh my God, that was a really we long day. We had an all day tournament. <laughs> we had an all day tournament. It was like from yeah. 8 in the morning to like 5 p.m. Wow. And it was game like eight after games, game, after game, game after game. After game after so, what's that game. like as, as athletes on top of this? Ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> tired. I mean, you're not, you're really not drinking tired. any water, yeah, you're not water. drinking any kind of fluids. Uh -huh. Nope, nothing. You have to be careful, right? I mean, because yeah. especially, I mean, it'd be one thing if you were just sitting around the house all day, yeah. but when you're actually doing physical activity. Yeah, it was really hard. It's hard. Yeah, it was really difficult. So what, what does a typical day just look like in terms of your consumption of food and beverage during, during Ramadan? Um, well, this year we broke our fast. It's around sunset. And it was around 7.30. In the beginning it was like 7.45. Yeah, yeah, in the beginning it was yeah, pretty late. It was pretty late. Um, you know, I mean, you don't. You think, you know, like during the day, you're just like, oh, you're craving so much food, but when you get it in front of you, you eat so fast that your stomach just closes. You get and you're, yeah, yeah, you, you get full really, really, really fast. Yeah. But um, yeah, and then it's really a time crunch because you break your fast, and then we have nightly prayers that are called tarawih, and they start around like 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you eat, you clean up, you get yourself ready, and then you're at the mosque. And by the time you get home, you're drained and you want to just die. Yeah, yeah, you just want to fall asleep, crash, yeah. crash yeah. yeah. And then you, you get up early before sunrise the next morning mm -hmm. and yeah. eat and drink yeah. to yeah. Kind of prepare yeah. yourself for just, the day? Yeah, just like light things. Yeah, just it's called suhoor. We wake yeah. up um, mm -hmm. before sunrise mm -hmm. and we just eat something, just like cereal, apple, anything, Spanish. whatever. Yeah, sandwich. <laughs> Hot maybe. pockets are really good. Hot pockets <laughs> for Ramadan. All right. Yeah. yeah. That. So we stop eating before the call for prayer, mm -hmm. and um, then we just pray Once fajr. Said, yeah, you pray fajr and then yeah, go to sleep. Go to sleep. You know, well, for us, we went to sleep till we had school. Yeah. So. And then you get up and you start your day. What are some other lessons that you feel like you came away from this Ramadan period with, the learning or insight that you gained from? In this fasting period? Um, I think you get closer to family in the month of Ramadan. Mm. Yeah. Because we definitely. really, um, especially if you have a big family, it's like every day you eat at a different house. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, like Mahani, yeah. so she, she has a huge yeah, family. I have like a really like big a, family. So every day it's at a different house. Yeah. And you just get, you really, like, at, at sunset, you guys yeah. go to yeah. a different yeah. house. Okay. Yeah. Especially because we're all Arab. And so it's, we, ha we have like, well, yeah, you're half Arab. But <laughs> <laughs> we, you go, it's like Azumas, and basically your whole family gathers together at the same time. And it's kind of cool actually thinking about it that ev all Muslims right now are eating dinner. Yeah. yeah. So mm. it's everyone's unity, eating at the yeah. same time, yeah. yeah. 
But it's nice, you get a lot closer to your family. Like, you get sick of them. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, enough. Let's not, not see each other. <laughs> yeah, another month. Each other, yeah. no. <laughs> when do children begin uh, Ramadan, and what's that process like? Um, well, for us, I think it was easier when we were younger, just because yeah. it was in the winter time. It, it would, like, mm -hmm. come really close to Christmas. It's so, like, the malls mm -hmm. would be crazy. Eid was usually but, like, yeah. Christmas, like, because my birthday's in December, so it'd be, like, Christmas, Eid, birthday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, my wallet was full. <laughs> but, like, it was it was a lot easier than... Yeah, it because was you'd come easier. home, like, an hour, 4.30, you'd be eating. Yeah, the day was but way shorter. But now, shorter. like, especially yeah. for kids, like, my little sister's 10, she's getting used to fasting, and she likes to do it. Yeah. Like, it's a lot harder for her than it was for me, you know? So, like, my cousins, when I used to do it, like, around 7, they don't do it. It's too hard for them, it's you know, 7.30. Yeah. Yeah. So they late. go to school, yeah. you know, so it's harder for them. But, but so it's yeah. really funny seeing like their train of thought out <laughs> loud. Like my niece, she was she was trying to fast one day, and I was over there, and she saw some Gatorade, and she was really thirsty, and she opened it, and she's like, "I'm not gonna drink it." She's like, "I'm not gonna <laughs> drink it." No, I can fast. I can finish fasting. And then later on, like two minutes later, she grabbed the Gatorade and she took a sip. She's like, "But I'm gonna finish fasting the rest of the day." <laughs> yeah, so they just like, yeah, take a funny. break. It's like nice seeing that they like you know they try to. They discipline try. themselves. Yeah, because yeah. no. they say that, you know, they think it's cool, like, oh, everyone's fasting, I want to try it. Mm -hmm. Usually, like, like, my cousin, she's, like, six years old. She, like, did one day, and, like, when she got, because we had Azuma day, when she got there, she's like, give me the food, give me the food, you know? <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, so, but it's, uh, you know, the rest of the days they eat, or, like, they at least do it till, like, 2 o'clock. Yeah, at least but that. they just want to get used to it a little bit before they actually have to start doing it. It seems like, from all of your descriptions, of Ramadan that it isn't really about the fasting. It's about gaining self-control, yeah. stepping away from your normal routine of life, which mm -hmm. happens to be three times a day <laughs> eating, and, yeah. um, and really gaining a, a different perspective on life. Do yeah. you, does that seem yeah. true? Yeah. yeah, it's not only refraining from food and water, it's also your, it's, your we want to get, changes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you really want to get closer to God, you ask for more forgiveness, you pray more, it's, mm -hmm. we read the Quran, yeah, we give charity, mm -hmm. we just, you know, you really want to focus on your... So each of you have been through a Ramadan season for a few years now mm -hmm. um, yeah. as young Muslims. Do you notice any change year to year? Are you learning different things? Are you having different insights? Is it easier? Are you welcoming it differently? Well, when we were little, we used to literally think it's only about the food and water. Yeah. Like, why do we fit? Like, what's fasting? Oh, no food, yeah. no water. But like, as we grew, we learned that it's, it's not it's only that. Water. It's yeah, it's more than that. It means it teaches us a lot of stuff and we learn a lot of lessons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think um, are the lessons that non-Muslims could come away from learning about um, this this high holiday for for Muslims? Well, I think that they learn that because a lot of people think, oh, why aren't you guys allowed to eat or drink? You know, they, they th I don't know why some people think it's, it's like a punishment, yeah. but it's not. Yeah. It's like a blessing to you, honest. It's actually I mean, good for you. It is really good for you because <laughs> I remember like us, like when we were at that tournament, I was like, I was so thankful for water. Mm -hmm. Like seriously, when I came out, I was like, God bless this water, you know. <laughs> Any water oh is God, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the whole point of Ramadan is so you can empathize and sympathize with the poor and that, you know, people mm -hmm. all around the world, they don't have any clean water. Yeah. And they go for days without it. You know, us, it's, what, a few hours? Mm -hmm. That means days without it. And you just appreciate it a lot more when, you know, you have something in front of you than when you didn't have it. So mm -hmm. I, it made me appreciate, like, water so much more. Yeah, like, and, like we know that a there's more. a meal waiting for us yeah. when we get yeah. home. Yeah, when we the, get home. Yeah, the poor, they're just like, they, they have no idea when their yeah. next meal is. Yeah. So it connects you, it sounds like it connects you directly with the experience of, of a broader range of people than obviously mm -hmm. you come from a, you know, a socioeconomically advantaged mm -hmm. community yeah. and you have a private school and you have all these things, but there's yeah. a lot of people, as you said, that don't yeah, have don't those have, luxuries. Yeah. Yeah. And it really connects you with, it sounds like it connects you with, your ex with their experience as well. It makes yeah. you more humble too. Mm. It's like even though, you know, there's a lot of wealthy people and they, they can afford so much, but they don't appreciate what they have. But you, you're like, you know, a plate of rice and I'm good. And yeah. Give me a big glass of water and I'm good. It makes you more humble just as a person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maha, Miriam, and Fatah for being here. It was a great dialogue. I'm Bo River. For different drummers, keep the faith.